All right, we'll be looking at 2.1 today, and the title in your book is Exploring Parallel Lines, and it is on page 70 in your textbook. All right, so I want to show you uh, something that's pretty familiar, I think, to all of you, especially those of you that play basketball. Some of you, well, you've seen something like this in our gym, sort of. It's not exactly like this. It kind of moves up and, up and down instead of rotates like this. However, uh, do any of you have a basketball hoop like this on your, on your property? You have one like this that kind of moves like this? Yeah, okay, a few of you do. All right. So I want to use this diagram to explain a few things. We're going to learn a few terms today, and we're going to talk about relationships to angles. Now, in, in these basketball hoops, okay, in this position, if you take a look at the first position here, this is when the basketball hoop is in the raised position. All right, and so what happens is there would be uh, hinges here and hinges here, and this would be kind of as short as possible right here. And what we see is that the backboard and the supporting pole of the hoop, that they are parallel, okay? And as a matter of fact, as this type of basketball hoop moves up and down, they remain parallel. So here's in the lower position, you see that? The hoop and the supporting pole are parallel. And what changes is really the angle or the relation to these lines right here. Okay? And so you see these lines right here that are supporting. And so that changes in relation there. So when a line intersects or cuts through two or more lines, that line is called a transversal. And so that's the first term we're going to learn about here. The transversal, you can copy this word for word or in your own words if you want into your notebook, please. Just take a few moments to do that. The transversal. And so here's the diagram that accompanies that. So here, um, if we take a look at this uh, diagram here, right here, we have two lines, these blue ones. Now notice they're not parallel. A transversal does not have to cut two parallel lines. It can be any line that cuts two or more lines, it intersects like this. We are going to be um, talking about parallel lines though, primarily. And so uh, the relationships between angles that we're going to explore are when this transversal cuts uh, to parallel lines. So let's say these lines are parallel. You would see this symbol, a little arrow that's kind of in the line, not at the end of the line, but in the line. That means that, that the other line that has this symbol on it as well, that means those two lines are parallel. So sorry, there's freehand, not very good. But this would be your transversal here, <clears throat> okay? The transversal two parallel lines. Now, just a, just a little note here, this is just a little aside, this is what I think of. When you're spelling parallel, lots of times the double letters are usually kind of the first consonants that you see in a line, right? All sorts of letters, but there's one R and two L's, so this is a bit of a strange word, so just remember that when you're, you're spelling it. I'm not sure why I mentioned that, but I think about it literally every time I write the word, so because it's odd, you know, like summer, apple, like it's always the first consonant that are, that's repeated. It's not the case here. It's the second consonant that's repeated. Okay, there you go. A little glimpse, a little, little snapshot into, into my mind. All right, that you all really want it. Okay, so transversal, we got that? All right, so let's get back to our notes here. And there are relationships, as I mentioned, when the lines are parallel. I'm going to also clip this in, and I want to explore this just a little bit. Okay, so if you could copy this diagram down just in your notes, please. Take a little, take a little time to do that. Here's a, a little snapshot of where the parallel lines are parallel. Okay, so now that you have this copied down into your notebook or you're almost done here, what we're going to do is we're going to explore relationships between the angles that are labeled here. We know that this angle right here is 140, okay? Um, can anyone tell me what one of these other angles are, any one of these A, A through uh, G here, do you know the measure of any one of these angles given that this is 140 and can you tell me why you know that or why you think you know that? Can you get Jenna first? Um, F is 140 also. Okay, so you're saying F is 140 also. Okay, that is true. Do you know why? Okay, you don't have to know why we're going to, that's what I'm teaching you today, so don't, you don't have to know why. But you are absolutely right, they look the same, okay, and these angles are actually called corresponding angles. So because 
because you went there, let's let's go there. Corresponding angles. I hadn't clipped that one yet, but let's jot down what corresponding angles are. And again, you can copy this if you want, right into your notebook, or you can in your own words, doesn't really matter to me. It's up to you guys to know this stuff, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna move this around a little bit. Come on now. And so corresponding angles, okay, if we have um, one interior angle and one exterior angle that are non-adjacent and on the same side of the transversal. So here's the diagram, and this fits with 140 and F as well. So it would really be like this angle and this angle, sort of, okay? Corresponding. So there's an interior angle and an exterior angle. Well, what are interior angles? Interior angles in these diagrams would be, and I'll just point you over to this diagram as well, would be inside of the parallel lines, okay? Interior means in what? Inside the parallel lines. So these four angles, A, B, C, and D, in this diagram would be interior. The interior angles here would be 140, C, D, and E. So those ones in red, those are interior angles. And of course, along with interior comes the exterior angles. And the exterior angles would be outside of the parallel lines. So again, that's clipped from your textbook. There are any angles formed by a transversal and two parallel lines that lie outside the parallel lines. So we've got interior angles, we've got exterior angles. And that will help us understand this definition for corresponding angles. So it's one interior angle, which would be the 140, and one exterior angle that are on that are non-adjacent, so that means they aren't connected like this. See, that's that A is not a corresponding angle to this one, so they're not connected. But they're on the same side of the transversal. So that would be this one and this one. Same side of the transversal, one interior, one exterior. That's the definition. It's easier just to recognize corresponding angles than it is to define them. But now you know. Okay, so that's great. You know that F is 140. I'll leave that here. Okay, what else do we know? What other angles do we know? Oh, great. What other angles do we know? Yeah, just that? C is 40. C is 40. Not 140, but 40, you say. Okay? So that is correct. Why would you say that C is 40? 180 subtract Okay, 180 subtract 140. That's right. 140 and the angle C are supplementary. Okay, supplementary angles. That means their sum adds up to 180. Okay, what do we do? We know any other ones here? Mm -hmm. uh, G is also 40. Okay, G is also 40. Why? Because it's uh, complementary. G is also 40 because it is well, it's corresponding. corresponding. Yeah, very good. <laughs> So that's your answer. Just remember, you're the corresponding answer, okay? So very good. So yes, G is 40 as well. Now notice that 140 F and G, 140 and 40, that's also supplementary, so everything's falling into place. Okay, what about B? What is angle B? It's 140, that's right. Do you know why? What are these angles? We learned that last chapter. Are they complementary? No, not complementary. Good try, good try. Complementary is when two angles add up to 90 oh. degrees. Yeah. What are these called? You not remember from last last chapter? Okay, these are opposite angles, sometimes called vertically opposite angles or just opposite angles. So B is 140, that's correct, because they are opposite. That means two straight lines that intersect at a point, the angles opposite will be equal always. And so A is what? It, because of the same reason. A is 40. Very good. Okay. All right. We're piecing it together. So there's one other relationship that I want to point out that maybe you didn't know, but these angles, C and E, they are interior angles. And more specifically, they are 
same side interior angles because they are on the same side of this transversal. Okay? So what's the relationship same side interior angles? What do we know about them? What is it what does it look like there? Yes, they are supplementary as well. So same side interior angles uh, equal, add up to 180. All right, so here you go. Same side interior angles are supplementary. That would be C and E. That would also be 140 and what? And D. Yep. So D is also 40. You can see that 140 right here, F and D, are supplementary, right? They are adjacent angles, um, and there's a straight line there. So also G and D are opposite angles, so those are identical. We have supplementary situation over here. Okay, it's all adding up. Okay, so we got all those angles. So we're talking about corresponding angles, same side interior. Um, I'm just going to clean this up here, and I'm going to ask one more thing. What about... What about... Uh, uh, let's see, what about this angle and this angle? What do they appear to be? Yes, they're the same measure, they are. And so what would you call those angles? What would you call that pair of angles? 140 and D are same side interior angles. So what do you think A and G would be? Opposite side exterior. Yeah, that's great. So let's do opposite side exterior and just jot that down. Oh, come on. Pop. Opposite side exterior angles are um, congruent is really the word that we want to use. Congruent means the same, identical, same measure. You will see this term as well uh, as we move through the converse. I think you might have seen that actually in chapter one as well. But what is the converse? A converse is a statement that's formed by switching the premise or the original statement with the conclusion okay, of another statement. So uh, you, you basically you, you switch them around. The converse is true. So um, it's not always true, but we'll talk more about this as it comes. I don't know if, do we see the word converse in here anywhere? I don't know. I, I don't think we actually did the example or that from the text where they talked about that. But anyways, that's coming up. So let's just talk about the summary real quick here. When, transversal, uh, when a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines, there are lots of relationships that we know are true all the time. If the lines aren't parallel, then these don't hold true. Okay? But if they're parallel, these hold true. So A and E would be corresponding angles. They have the same orientation, so they kind of open up the same way, and they have the exact same measure. Okay? Also corresponding right here. Corresponding, corresponding. When a transversal intersects a pair of non-parallel lines, the corresponding angles are not equal. So A and E here, even though they would technically be identified as corresponding angles, they're not equal because these original lines aren't parallel. Okay. And if we look at just these relationships again here, um, you know, A and this angle, which would be B here, those are supplementary, they add to 180. A and this angle, which I think is D over here, these are equal, right? These are supplementary, this one and this one. This one and this one, opposite side exterior angles, are equal or congruent. And this angle right here, which looks like it's C and E, those are same side interior, they are supplementary. And of course, opposite angles are equal. So A and whatever this angle would be, that looks like uh, D. A and this one, D. Those are equal. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. I'll give you your assignment here and you can start working on that.